Hey guys, Woods Farm here. Just down at uh, Sword and Plowshares Museum, just south of Ottawa. Going to be helping out today, doing some work on the Land Rover. I'm uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the clutch. A lot of Cold War era stuff, LSVWs. Old Jeep. Pretty sure this Jeep's for sale, if you're interested. M109 self-propelled gun. British uh, APC. I got to drive this last summer. Lots of various artillery pieces and uh, anti-tank guns. You got the uh, Iltus. Basically, the uh, great grandchild of the Kubel wagon. That's what that is. Other Eltis, I don't know who this belongs to. Look at that crazy thing. A couple old uh, trucks, three quarter tons, I guess. I don't know. They just phased those out when I was in the Army. I never actually uh, did my uh, driver qualification when I was in the reserves. I was a mortarman. I took my mortar course instead and I never had to drive, which was, at the time everyone wanted to do the driver course, you know, and I learned how to drive the Iltis and the LSVW. And uh, I actually got put on a driver course and then they realized I didn't have my driver's license, or at least my full license. So they took me off the course, put me on the mortar course and uh, 81 millimeter mortar, way more fun than driving around. Glad that happened. And uh, later as I was in, in the military without the driver qualification, you know, so many times someone would show up, some sergeant would just show up and be like, I need a driver. And you'd have to get up and, you know, go drive somebody somewhere, do something. And I don't know how many times that saved my ass from having to get up in the middle of the night. So, it wasn't a big deal that I wasn't qualified. But you know, 20 plus years later, now I'm out volunteering at the museum and you know, drove an Elsus for the first time last summer. I remember being in the reserves and feeling like the Elsus was just terrible. Like it was so small. It seemed so small to me, you know, like four guys with their kit trying to jump in the back of that damn thing, drive around. Yeah, right. But I mean, driving it around last summer, it was fun little kind of 
Jeep type vehicle, like I, I enjoyed driving it around and it'd be cool to have one for, you know, off-road and stuff and, you know, bombing around the farm. Got a collection of old brand gun carriers. The museum's got a couple of carriers in running condition. And they got lots of uh, scrap ones laying around. This one here was uh, obviously picked up surplus by somebody, converted into some sort of bush buggy. Um, I think it had a plow on the front. I think these were used probably after the war, bought up by farmers and stuff, and uh, turned into log skidders and, you know, plows and whatever. But this is one of the ones here that they're talking about um, trying to refurbish and turn it into some sort of a half track or something. I like fixing stuff. Um, I'm no. By no means am I a, a car guy though, so I don't know what a lot of this stuff is. But, I mean, they were talking about taking this, the front end of this guy, and melding it with the back of that Bren gun to make something. I think that's a pretty big, pretty ambitious project, but not impossible. Anyways, you can definitely find uh, Sword and Plowshares Museum online. Um, find their website. And I think during the summer on the weekends, they're, uh, they're down here and open. You can come and check it out. You can always send the owner an email. And uh, if you want to come down and see what they've got here. And they're always looking for volunteers. Um, you know, if you're mechanically inclined or even if you're not. They're always looking for guys to help wrench on stuff. Anyways, I'm going to get to work on this uh, Land Rover here. Uh, thanks for watching. Definitely like, subscribe, comment below. If you want to see a video on any of these vehicles specifically, uh, let me know. And I might do a quick video on what we do today on this Land Rover. So uh, look for that too. Anyways, thanks for watching.